What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday to everyone. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Friday edition of the Pandemic Update for Friday, April 5th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Let's face it, there's a lot of viruses out there. There's a lot of uh, news circulating now with the H5N1. We talk about all that here on the channel. The COVID pandemic, H5N1 bird flu, regular influenza, measles, you name it. We talk about it. Want to stay informed? Subscribe to the channel down below. Want to help keep others informed? By all means, share these videos with anyone you know. But by giving this a thumbs up and commenting down below, it helps the YouTube algorithm recognize my content and says, hey, wait a second, this content's getting a lot of attention. It's getting some reactions. People like this. Let's push this out a little more. Well, if they push it out a little more, more people stay safe. All right, first off, two notes. You may notice my voice. It sounds better. It, I wouldn't say it's back to 100%, but it's definitely a lot better than what it was. For those who recall, or if maybe you haven't followed me, um, I was sick last weekend. Negative for COVID multiple times. I don't think it was the flu. I've had the flu vaccine. I know you can get a breakthrough flu case, but I never had a fever. It was just minor symptoms, but the biggest annoying symptom was my voice was absolutely, it was gone. It was trashed. It sounded absolutely terrible. And I would say, if I had to guess, we'll say it's 70% right now. It's the worst in the morning. Gets better in the afternoon. I've had plenty of liquids this afternoon, so that's a good thing. And I try and moisten up my voice before I come on and do these updates. Second of all, you may have heard, we've had an earthquake here in the Northeast. We actually did a little short on that earlier today. And just before recording, I wanted to record this a little bit earlier, but I got sidetracked. Why? We had an aftershock. It was a 4.0 magnitude aftershock. Hopefully we don't have any more aftershocks during this update, but hey, it always creates excitement. I know it's normal on the West Coast, but here in the Northeast U.S., does not always happen. The last one I remember is back in 2011, just before we ended up having Hurricane Irene, which that was a doozy of a storm. All right, starting off today, the first thing we have to talk about is, you know, air quality. We talk about air quality here on the channel, but get this. Study links air quality improvements to fewer school COVID cases. I've been saying it all along. If you have a CO2 meter, Okay, send it to your kid in school. I know, I have 885 right now. It's, it's not the best of a reading, but get some readings in schools. If it's high, that's not good. That means the ventilation is poor in a school. But if you have good readings and you have good ventilation in schools, you know, air purifiers, such as the ones I have behind me, uh, HVAC systems, if you keep good HEPA purified air going in classrooms, Guess what? Less people are going to get sick. Diseases are not going to spread as easily. And guess what? You will have a higher attendance rate because students and staff will not have to continuously keep calling out sick. And this talks about schools. Guess what? The same can be said for offices. It's the same deal. You have these offices where you have cubicles. Let's just say, right now, I am in an office. This is my office, we'll just say. And it really is. You have much bigger offices where you have cubicles about this size, but actually they're smaller than this size, okay? You have a bunch of them. Guess what? You have hundreds of people in one office, and in that office, disease could be spreading. Well, if you have good, clean, purified air, they're not going to spread as fast because you have machines. You have HEPA air purifiers that are trying to keep the air clean. All right, moving on. Chicago Health warns of possible measles exposure on CTA buses and city schools. If you do not know, and I don't even live in Chicago, but I do know this. There's actually a this whole story why I know this. But anywho, CTA stands for Chicago Transit Authority. Well, one of the reasons why I know that is the music group Chicago at one time... Uh, had their name, Chicago Transit Authority. Well, well, the real CTA did not like that, and they ended up 
saying, hey, you need to change your name. So then they became the music group Chicago. That's just one of the reasons why. Another reason is I'm a transit junkie. I like to uh, research these things, and, well, that happens to be what their name is. All right, there's a whole bunch of uh, lists of exposures, and if you want to look that up, you can do so by going to my uh, Twitter. I did tweet this out. We're not going to sit here and read all the stories because we have a lot of data to go over. Alrighty, taking a look now at BNO News, and I do have to refresh this because there is new news. Justin from BNO News. H5N1 bird flu has been found at another dairy farm in Texas, raising the U.S. total to 16. So there are now 16 uh, total outbreaks, I guess you want to call them. Then we come down here to this. This was uh, posted last night. Thousands of penguins found dead on island in Antarctica. Researchers investigating whether H5N1 bird flu is involved or not. Guess we'll have to find out. I would think the odds are likely that it could end up being H5N1 bird flu. Now we have to take a look at two polls, one which I conducted today, another which we have final results from, from a couple days ago. Simple question, do you still mask up everywhere you go? Now I would assume the vast majority of the people that responded to this follow me, but maybe some are people that don't follow me. As you can see, it got retweeted, or reposted as we call it nowadays, 18 times, so maybe some of this is from people that don't follow me. 89% said yes, 11% said no, we are not going to read the comments because I am sure there are some silly comments mixed in with the good comments, which we're a G-rated channel, we don't need to uh, see stuff that's inappropriate, I've already removed, or blocked a couple people earlier for stuff that, it was just uh, comments that should have not been made whatsoever. Alright, moving on to this one, this was something we did the other day. Are you concerned about H5N1 bird flu? 88.7% said yes, 11.3% said no, and the final number of votes is 629. So the vast majority said yes, and going back to our previous poll real quickly, that is up to 858 votes, 14 hours left. Probably on the Sunday edition of the pandemic update, we will get a round to uh, showing you the final tally from this as long as I remember to do so. All right, taking a look at air qualities in the United States, I have to refresh this, and it's not going to be that bad. It's It really isn't. It's, it's, it's fairly good today. You have a couple bad areas, but not that many. Most of the east, fine. Just a few stations that always report orange for some reason, no matter how good everywhere else is in the northeast. And there is some slight concerns across the plains. You can see there's a few areas that are... Hey, they are in the orange, they are in the red, but again, look at the West Coast. Not bad at all, just your typical hot spots in California. Overall, not terrible in the United States. Could be much better in the Plains, but that's just a small area. We'll take this because earlier in the week, much of the East was in the yellows, some oranges mixed in. Yeah, that was not good to see. EMS total for Philadelphia yesterday. Again, it's over 700, 748, which for the longest time, if you go back a couple months ago, being over 700, that was normal. But as of lately, normal is below 700, so and it's starting to trend back upward slightly again. We'll see what happens over the weekend. Let's do a live look in at what's going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Not many calls right now, just five. Hemorrhaging, vehicle accident, cardiac emergency, abdominal pains, and subject in pain. How about we take a look here, I have to refresh this. Chester County, Pennsylvania. Again, suburbs of the Philadelphia area. Respiratory difficulty, back pain, heart problems, sick person, injured person, emotional disorder, another emotional disorder, and sick person. So a few calls to be had in Chester County, Pennsylvania right now. Just quickly taking a look at the Walgreens numbers. 13.7% positivity rate. The prior week was 15.1%. It's down 1.4%. 7,036 tests versus 7,962. Testing is down, but a few states in the Northeast did have a legitimate rise this week. All right, let's just take a look at a couple wastewater scan sites, if we can. If this freezes, We'll just move on to the CDC data because we do have quite a bit of uh, CDC data to take a look at today. And yes, it does look like this site is freezing, which does happen from time to time. So we'll just skip over that. Remember, wastewater bonanza comes on Sunday. All right, taking a look at hospital capacity. We're just going to do 
the United States here. We'll do a more in-depth look at this maybe tomorrow. Uh, nationally, 75.3% of all patient beds are being used. COVID-19 makes up 1.1% of that. Influenza is at 0.6% of that. ICU, let's take a look at that. ICU usage in the United States, 70.2%, and it does look like 1.1% is for COVID, and 0.7% is for influenza. Again, we'll do a much uh, bigger look at that tomorrow. We can look at the CDC wastewater site. While wastewater scan, I can see it's still spinning around in circles, so I don't know what the deal is with that. And there is some good news. We're just going to briefly look at this. Here's that good news. Red sites, 80 to 100%. COVID detected, there's only four of them now in the United States. Fantastic. It is now down 73% from last week. Orange sites, that's down to just 37 sites. That's 60 to 79% COVID detected. That is down by 42%. Even those light blue sites, 223 still. Got a lot of work to do there, but it's down by 19%. And that's moderate levels. 569, 20% to 30% slightly darker shades of blue that's down by 10 percent and the really dark shades of blue zero to 19 percent covid detected that's at 378 sites that's one number we like to see go up because that means low levels of covid and there are 69 new sites this week which some of them are just sites being brought back and maybe a few of them are legitimately new sites. Also good news, wastewater levels. You're seeing green here. You're seeing a lot of low and minimal levels across the United States. There's just, there are a few moderate sites, Alabama, Mississippi, Wyoming, Minnesota. There may be one or two others uh, mixed in between, although I'm not seeing any others. So that's good to see that number going down. And deaths in the past week change from the prior week down by 20%. Yes, deaths had a significant drop this week. COVID-19 hospital admissions in the past week, 8,015. That is down by 15.3%. Good to see these levels dropping. And we're starting to see more green on the map, which means, hey, they are dropping in more places. Now, there is a little bit of a surprise twist today. Epidemic status. It's now growing once again for COVID in Texas. Yes, it is growing once again in Texas, and it is likely growing in Kansas. Coming down here to flu, you know, influenza, it is growing once again in New York State, and it is likely growing in North Dakota. So that is something we will have to keep an eye on. Moving on now to more CDC data. This is not new data. This is a repeat from last week. JN.1 variant is at 86%. JN1.13 is at 10.8%. JN1.18 is at 1.6% of the reported cases. Taking a look at this week's flu update, and we do see that in North Dakota, look at this, flu activity is back to high once again. It is still high in Washington, D.C., District of Columbia, and it is still high in New Mexico. Wyoming, Nebraska, and let's see, how about New York City? I don't think it is, no, moderate in New York City, and it is still high in Michigan. Now, when I say it's back to high in North Dakota, it's back to that red shade. It went higher than what it was last week, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, last week was just more of an orange shade. And you can see here, as I advance this, you can see it went slightly higher once again in the area of, or in the state of North Dakota. All right, taking a look now at what is going on in New Jersey, 251 hospitalizations, just 66 out of 70 hospitals reported today. That's telling me that as we go through the weekend, it'll probably drop, but hey, let's see. 10 people on a ventilator in the ICU, 31 discharges. There have been 40 discharges in New Jersey. All right, New York State now, bit of a mixed picture today. 51, or excuse me, 581 people have tested positive. When we take a look at the hospitalizations, you can see here, they didn't really drop all that much. In fact, they're actually up by four. And as it's refreshing here, let's zoom this in. Yes, the number was actually up by four today. So yesterday was 554, today is 558. In the ICU, 54, and that is actually up about by 10. So 54 people in the ICU, and this is the statewide number. Let's take a look at Long Island. Let's see what is going on there. And Long Island is up ever so slightly today. 98 people in the hospital, 14 in the ICU. But I wanted to show you the capital region. The capital region this week has done anything but drop. Look at this. 
It's been rising there all week long. It's back up to 27 hospitalized, four people in the ICU. They started the week at four in the ICU with uh, 22 in the hospital. So they have rose slightly up in the capital region of New York State. All right, drum roll, please. Let's take a look at what is going on in California. In California this week, things continue to improve. COVID levels are dropping. COVID deaths are dropping. Admissions are dropping. And the positivity rate is at 2.4% for COVID. Influenza positivity rate is at 4.5%. Deaths are down this week. And it does say here, uh, influenza admissions, 174. And COVID admissions war, 797 in the state of California. And quickly, taking a look at what is going on in LA, I do need to refresh this to make sure it is up to date. And we can see here that hospitalizations, they continue to drop. Uh, deaths, they're up ever so slightly, not not much, I mean very minimal drop there, and testing. Looks like the positivity rate went up ever so slightly in the state of, uh, Cal not the state, in the city of Los Angeles. We showed you California. Now we're showing you a city within California, which is Los Angeles. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. We will have pandemic updates throughout the weekend. We'll have one tomorrow. We'll have one Sunday. Tomorrow we'll probably look at whatever news there is. We'll look at some more hospital data. And who knows, maybe I'll have some other things planned for that update as well. And of course, Sunday will be the weekly wastewater bonanza where we'll just go you know, randomly throughout the country and take a look at various wastewater sites that are reporting. I hope you have a safe weekend. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Want to see more like this? Want to stay informed? Subscribe down below. Share this with anyone you know. Leave a comment down below as well. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone. Have a fantastic but safe weekend. Thanks for watching.